Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. In today's video, we're gonna look at analyzing a weldment. And it's gonna be this rear suspension arm on this assembly that was provided by a Craig Hall of Hall Design. Craig comes up with some really cool suspension and chassis designs for trophy trucks, um, also known as Baja trucks. So in today's uh, demonstration, we're going to we're gonna check out this rear suspension and uh, we're going to take a look at any of the T-junctions um, that have been a result of creating all the mid-surfaces from these solid plate elements. So if I go back to this original file, you'll see that if I, if I turn off and check out the inside here, that all these have a... They're, they're all solid elements, right? Or I'm sorry, solid plates. And so they have a thickness to them. They have some holes and features uh, that are used for um, aligning these components uh, prior to being welded. And so the process with uh, thin walled plates is to convert those into mid-surface models. And anytime you create a mid-surface model, it, introduce, it introduces the gap between uh, components. And so this becomes the challenge of, number one, finding those gaps um, is the biggest part of it. And then you have to extend those surfaces to a common T-junction. And um, once you do that and then you mesh your parts, you have um, a common line where all of your nodes all of your nodes reside on that line, and uh, that way you're transferring uh, loads and displacements properly. As I mentioned, the challenge becomes in trying to find these, and this is this is not a real complex model, um, but there are quite a few intersections where those T-junctions um, could arise. And so what we're going to look at today is the Mesh Control Explorer toolbar. Now this is used for both, it can be used for um, um, looking for the interfaces between uh, solid geometry, but it also can be used to look for the interfaces between uh, surface solids, we'll call it. And if I look in my mesh sizing propagation options, uh, I have selected all of the solids shown here. And the reason for defining these is we're going to look at this, what's called an edge pairing tolerance. So we're essentially looking at the gaps and we've specified a tolerance and if the gap falls within that tolerance, here we've specified an eighth of an inch, then the, the downstream actions that we could perform will we adhere to this value if it falls within that, are already that mapped by proximity. So based on that one eighth proximity distance that we, that we established, you'll see I've already extended the surfaces between this interface and so you'll see that is highlighted so it's part of it's, it's within that proximity value so if we mesh these parts right now you'll have a common node connected at the t-junction on the other ones we get a list uh, below the toolbar here and um, if we take a look at all the the adjacent surfaces that don't have imprinted edges so we're essentially looking for all t-junctions using this button. You'll see as I scroll through here, it highlights the surface and then the respective curves that fall within that distance range or that, that value that we set. So if I zoom in here, you'll see there is a gap between that edge and the adjacent surface that's highlighted. Okay, so that falls within that eighth inch gap. So we can look through here. I almost think about this as your to-do list, right? All of these T-junctions that it's highlighting are areas that we need to extend and uh, that way our mesh propagates across uh, from the edge to the adjacent surface okay so we can go through and highlight these um, if we have them all uh, if we do a show all it shows all of the T intersections or T junctions and then from this list if you right click you have some options you can imprint the edges and that's just going to be imprint the edges of whatever I have selected. If you choose to imprint all edges, everything that's in this list, it's going to imprint to the adjacent surface. If you choose to extend imprints anywhere that your curve falls short of, of an intersecting uh, curve, uh, it will extend that to the next neighboring curve. And what I found in this particular model is if I, if I try to imprint edges from these uh, the different results in this list. There were a couple that, that gave me some results that weren't really favorable. And, and please note that this toolbar is, uh, is a general toolbar, so it's used in many different scenarios. For my particular scenario, it, it didn't work 
perfect. Um, but the the cool thing about it is, like I said, you can you can use this as your as your to do list to figure out what you still have left to extend. So I'm going to use this to highlight the individual features, and then I'm going to jump back into the meshing toolbox. I'll go to geometry editing. I'll choose extend, and then I have to choose a surface that I want to extend to. So I'm going to select this surface here, and then we can choose our curves around the edges that were highlighted. And then when we click OK, you'll see that that extended to that blue part. So now we have an intersection there. So if I turn on my mesh, I actually already have this part. This part's already meshed. You'll see there's a gap between this other gusset here and this gusset has been has been extended as we just did. So we'll turn our mesh back off. Just clutters up the screen a little bit. So when we jump back to our mesh control toolbox, I said this is kind of like your checklist. So now if I look again at the at the intersections, you'll see the intersections that are part of our list now. These have been these have been completed. And so the ones that are highlighted are the ones that we have left that we need to to jump in and and do some work on. Um, but it's really cool. It serves as a check as you're going through this. And another thing to note is this mesh propagation tool. When we go back into meshing, uh, this is also an option when you go to mesh surface and you go to uh, advanced sizing options. Under here, under here you have propagate mesh sizing. This eliminates the need to perform a non-manifold add on all these components. So these are all still, if, if I turn off the mesh tool, I'm sorry, if I turn off the, the highlight tool that's on here under mesh control explorer, And we jump back in here. I'm just going to use the draw erase toolbar just so that you can see these are individual solids. So this is a way that we can mesh um, individual bodies and the mesh will still propagate across that boundary. So this serves a couple of different um, uh, advantages here. Uh, one, if I have any changes, so if let's say Craig changed the opening in these and he sent me a revised model, well I can I can pull this out, replace it with a new one and not have to recover the, the non-manifold geometry, which sometimes if you have contact uh, regions established and you recover that geometry, um, it, it can mess things up. So you have a lot of re-clicking and, and reselections that you have to go through. I found this tool, this is a fairly new tool, and I found it very valuable um, in improving my efficiencies. So uh, I hope you find the same gains, and I look forward to hearing your comments. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, to reach out. Thanks and have a great day.